Molly is a very large supplier of gaskets in the aftermarket under the brand name Molly Original. Recently, I had a discussion with Bill McKnight on multi-layer steel gasket quality. Bill agreed to come back again and talk about rubber gasket quality. So Bill, welcome once again. Thanks, Alex. Today, most automotive engines use rubber and plastic to seal valve covers, timing covers, intake manifolds, plenum gaskets, oil pans, and other assorted stuff. Actually, other than head gaskets and man exhaust manifold gaskets, pretty much everything. And I see you brought a bunch of samples with you, so I'm hoping you'll tell our viewers about the difference between carrier and non-carrier gaskets. Well, carrier gaskets have rubber, and I use that term loosely, bonded to either a plastic or steel carrier, as you see here. I've got a steel and a plastic. Can you explain to our audience what the carrier does? Yes, it simply holds the gasket in perfect position when the mated parts, in these cases oil pans, are assembled to the block and fastened together. And? That's it? Believe it or not, that is. Yeah, they do add a bit of rigidity and a bit of thickness, and in this case a windage tray, but basically they hold the rubber in position is their job. Before I forget, let's go back to something you said earlier. You were talking about rubber and you said, I use the term loosely. What do you mean and what does that have to do with Molly Original gasket quality? Good memory, Alex. Natural rubber comes from trees and it isn't used in the gasket business. Everything we use is synthetic and it comes from petroleum. There's kind of a food chain, if you will, with nitrile and buna end rubber at the very bottom, and then fluoroelastomers in the middle and higher end, and then HNBR at the very high end. When we choose a gasket material, we look at the following parameters. What temperature will the part see? Will the gasket come in contact with coolant, gasoline, oil? We use a lot of fluoroelastomers and we use HMBR on GM and Ford where it's needed. Well, how about our competitors? What are they using? Well, Alex, they run the whole range. Some competitors use good materials. Some, if we talked before, cut corners and use inferior materials to save money. Mm. This is a tough one because basically you really can't look at the material and tell what it is. So what is a gasket buyer supposed to do then? It's simple. Buy Molly Original. We don't cut any corners and we don't use any inferior materials. Well, it sounds like a plan to me. Now let's get back to rubber gaskets. You've shown us and explained the carrier style gaskets. How about the other group, the non-carrier rubber gaskets? The vast majority of these gaskets, other than a few that were early replacements for cork and paper, fit in a receiver groove in one of two mating parts. Intake manifolds, oil pans, and valve covers commonly use this means of sealing. I've actually got some parts here to show you what I'm talking about. Wow, Bill, that valve cover must cost big bucks. What does that fit? Well, actually, this goes on a late model BMW inline six cylinder. Look here, Alex. See how I can lift this seal out of here? Mm -hmm. You can do this with the spark plug tube seals, too. They come out the same way. Well, these gaskets are not nearly as robust looking as the carrier style. How do you keep from over tightening them? See these steel things here? Mm -hmm. They prevent you from over tightening this BMW valve cover. You can only get it so tight. So, that sure beats buying a new valve cover. What else have you got here in your pile of parts? Well, nothing quite so exotic. What I do have is this modular Ford V8 valve cover right here. Okay, take a few minutes, Bill, and tell us how these gaskets seal. Well, as we just saw, they lay in a groove or channel on the part being sealed. The Ford gaskets are silicone rubber. Now, silicone rubber does swell about 25% when it comes in contact with oil. We put the seal in the valve cover and tighten it down until the aluminum valve cover hits the head. When the engine started, oil hits that seal and causes it to swell. Well, it can't get longer because it's confined in the valve cover, so it grows in diameter. And that growth in diameter causes pressure on that joint, and it results in a good seal. It's that easy? I can't believe that really happens. Are you sure you're not making that last <laughs> part up? Yes, it's amazing, Alex. When I first encountered this years ago, I thought, these things are never going to seal. But they seal, and they work really good. Well, we've done it again, Bill. We're out of time, and we never got to what gasket sealer to use on these gaskets, or any gasket for that matter. So, Bill, I figure after 35 years, you've probably got an answer on that, and a couple other gasket tips you can share. So, will you come back for another chat? Absolutely. Sounds good.